We had a little bit of a power surge, so I'm going to um, do this video again. If you want to wait until it's actually finished downloading or, or running its course, then you can um, play back to it and fast forward to where you left off. Um, so we're at the mercy of my limited knowledge of technology. So here's the video. Hey everybody, we're here in Elberton, Georgia, site of the famous Georgia Guidestones, uh, also known as America's Stonehenge. You're gonna see, probably see a lot of butterflies <laughs> flying around in the shot. So just to give a brief synopsis on this location, it was, the story began back in 1979. Uh, a man by the name of R.C. Christian, uh, that is a pseudonym, it's not an actual name, uh, came forward and stated that he wanted that he represented a, a company a group that has henceforth been known as the Guidestones group um, they wanted to build a, a monument to, to humanity here in Georgia and this is actually where we're at is considered the granite capital of the world there's a lot of uh, granite that is mined and manufactured here everything here that you're gonna see in these shots is made of granite uh, interesting tidbit about this when this uh, Mr. R.C. Christian uh, first went to the company uh, that built this uh, monolith to uh, get it um, contracted out uh, when he gave the reasoning for what he wanted to build here uh, the company was like that's kind of kind of crazy uh, this guy's just a nut job so we're gonna give him a far higher quote than what we would really need or we would really want to give somebody uh, so that this guy will go away so they paid the quote and from that was built this the monolith has and four, disclaimer there's people so it's there a are public people place. here yeah <laughs> on this monolith there are four actual megalith pieces with a fifth stone in the middle and a capstone at the top the capstone at the stop the top on each side has four different languages it translates to, and I can't remember off the top of my head which the languages are, but we'll see here in just a moment. On the capstone, the four uh, sides say, let these guidestones be a path to reason. And then on each of the, mega, the megaliths themselves are things put out in different languages. There is Spanish, Swahili. Well, it's instruction. Chinese and Russian. You'll be able to see it better once we get over to the actual English side. Yeah. Unless, I mean, some of you may read Spanish. Or any of these other languages on here. Capstone at the top right here, that's ancient cuneiform. It's just a, a lot of instructions. Uh, my favorite one, I do want to point this one out, is avoid petty laws and useless officials. I'm just going to leave it at that. I like that one. <laughs> but <clears throat> here we are over four, well, 40 years later, actually, March of this year. This was commissioned and finished March 22nd of 1980. So we're actually a few months shy of the 40th year of the construction of this. You may notice some holes. Hang on. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not over there yet. It's kind of showing the different languages. Go ahead about the holes. So we've got holes that are placed in different places, especially here on in the, the center. On the center stone. You've got the center stone. There's a hole right here. There is another one here and there's one straight up above now the one straight up above the sun shines through it at noon every day I'm not sure which one is which here but one of these the sun comes through at the solstice so there's actually some astronomical 
symbolism behind this build, this well, construction a, as well. A calendar. Calendar. Of sorts. Of sorts. <laughs> The legend gives all the data. The top of it is uh, has the capstone, and then on the four sides, what the languages were. You got Babylonian, cuneiform, classic Greek, Sanskrit, and Egyptian hieroglyphics. This is let, their, let these guidestones be to uh, be let these be guidestones to an age of reason. I'm sorry. Uh, to the left, it shows the astronomic features of what each one of those holes does. The author, Boss R.C. Christian, again a pseudonym, sponsored by a small group of Americans who seek the age of reason. And then here to the right, you've got the physical data, how much each stone weighs. This whole thing is 19 feet, 3 inches tall, weighs 237,746 pounds. I mean, this thing's huge. And just as a disclaimer, folks, um, we've been here for quite a while and have seen quite, quite a few people come in and out. Just be respectful of places like this. They're very interesting to visit and, and see, but like this information piece right here is in the ground, and I can't tell you how many people we've seen just stand up on it, and, and I don't know if you can tell real well how it's just really weathered and, and uh, some of the words are kind of almost what would you call it? Worn away. Worn away. Um, just be mindful. Don't stand on this. If you want to see what it says up top, just go around it right. and read it. Don't just stand on it. That just drives me nuts. But anyway, so <laughs> moving on. The, the languages that we have represented, we got Russia, English, Spanish, Swahili, Hindi, Hebrew, Arabic, and Chinese. So the big question that is on everybody's mind is, what the heck is this thing? <laughs> did aliens bring it? What was it built for? And just to give you an idea. Yeah, did this, this like place. In the of the so I mean, there's a, a road. A small amount of history on that. This uh, land was purchased from the family by this consortium of people that wanted to have this thing built. Man, that phrase feels nice. It's hot. But, um, when this land was purchased, it was purchased with the intention that even though that this monument was going to be here, the family that owned the property would still have the rights to farm on it in per perpetuity. Their children, their children's children. This property is now owned by the state. Oh, okay. But yeah, it's just out here in the middle of a really nice field. I mean, there's cameras yeah. all over the place because this thing has been vandalized in the past. Of course. So they do have it under watch. So the question is, what's it here for? Uh, there are a lot of conspiracy theories out there. Uh, my favorite, and I think the most far, far one out there, um, and Nick Widman will like this one, is that this is a landing port for aliens. <laughs> that this is a communication device to the heavens, and that's part of the reason why it's called America's Stonehenge, because it is, it's just, I don't know. But no, I don't believe that one. Um, and for you sensitive folks out there, I get zero vibe off this whatsoever, so I think we're pretty safe. The main <laughs> belief of this thing is, and um, we're not on the English side, but it's not a, it, it's not pointed, it's worth noting, I'm sorry, that each one of the stones, the instructions that are given, there are 10 of them. And so there are people that believe that this is the Ten Commandments of the Antichrist. That this is, because one of the top things, the number one commandment, so to speak, is to maintain human po the human population under 500 million. Uh, of course, human population is a lot bigger than that. There is a part on there about um, watching reproduction and maintaining it. So we're looking at population control, eugenics, all sorts of things like that. So it is, it's very controversial. And I don't think you touched on this, but simply also that it is just instructions uh, for the post-apocalyptic society that will be. So, we'll see. 
So, right. so with that, um, to Leah's point, um, the people that see to this day, here we are in 2020, no one, the people that have made this, built this, have never come forward. Uh, Mr. R.C. Christian, uh, still no idea to his identity. Don't know who the consortium is, the Godstones group that built it. Um, from a historical aspect, I'm with Leah. If you look back at the time frame that this thing was um, commissioned and then built, 1979-1980, we were still in the Cold War. I mean, we were still at war, you know, still in the Cold War going on with Russia. So that fear of a nuclear holocaust was very, very real back in that day. So I believe, and there's several others that believe this as well, that this was built. I mean, it's made out of granite. This isn't going anywhere. The way it's built into the ground and the structure of this thing, it's not going to go anywhere. So if this were to survive a holocaust, a nuclear holocaust, these would be a godstones of reason for the remaining population of humanity. And I think that's what it is. I don't, you know, if you want to buy into conspiracy theories, I can see, you know, where you can, you know, make it negative. But like Leah said, she doesn't get anything off of it. And I think it's just a piece of history. It's a really cool piece of history. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So we just wanted to share this little trip nugget in the middle of nowhere. Literally in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> um, I'm sorry if our audio is tainted by the band. It is windy. I'll take it. All right. So we will, I think, just finish out. Right. See you later. See ya.